and we're back and better than ever. <laughs> I'm here with Tyler Beckford of Teaser Bay Company. I'm Fly Navarro from the Fly Zone. We're sitting here with two Spanish mackerels. We're gonna do a couple things with the Spanish mackerel. Tyler, what are we looking for in a good Spanish mackerel for bait? It depends on what you're gonna do with it. Um, certain mackerels, if they're bigger or smaller. Um, bigger mackerels we try to use for the teasers on dredge, behind a squid chain, you know, in, in that matter. And then a smaller mackerel, some people like to use them as pitch baits. And uh, we'll show you how to rig one for a teaser and one for a pitch bait. Let me just explain what a pitch bait is. A pitch bait is uh, a certain kind of fishing where the fish come up to one of our teasers, mainly a billfish. And as the fish comes in, then we will pitch him a bait with a hook in it. So it goes through the whole tease process where the fish comes all the way in and then we present them with a bait with a hook in yep. it. So that way people understand exactly what it is. So let's start, what are you gonna start with first? We'll start with a teaser mackerel first. Needle, just, I'm just putting a hole in the head, go through the, you know, go through all the way through the head. Take a piece of, some people use 300 pounds, some use 220, whatever you prefer. This is a piece of 220. With a crimp that's not very With cooperative? A crimp that's, yep. Slide the 220 through the head. Your crimp already, already on there. Pulling it pretty tight, leave a little gap. Or I like to leave a little gap anyway. I'm all about a crimp little gap. Come on, man, it's supposed to be <laughs> laughing. That's what we're doing, that's what fishing's now, all about. You gotta laugh. Now we're gonna. We'll stitch up the belly first. Piece of uh, 50 pound floss, just regular needle. All right. Through the eyes. Just kind of get repetitive here. No, no worries. Making sure everything's pretty snug as you're going all the way down the belly of the fish. Now, do you use very tight stitching or do you use very um, wide stitching? I, I usually use a little bit tighter okay. stitching. And again, it's preference. I don't know that any, I, anyone's better or worse. or. I personally, I like the wide stitching only because when you're trying to rig 20 or 30 mackerel. It takes it, longer. Yeah, if you're no saving doubt. three or four stitches per bait, it really helps you yeah. out uh, on timing wise. It'll be the difference between rigging a bait, rigging baits for 40 minutes compared to rigging baits for 20 minutes. Yep. And like you said, it's just personal preference. Yep. I don't know that one's better than the other or not. Making everything pretty tight. All the way, all the way back through. Make sure there's not any like loose ends with the floss. Okay. Get back up here to the front. There you go, and then right back through the gills again. Right through the gills, through back through the eyes. And you're just trying to go back through the same holes that you created yes. the first time. Yep. And then up here, I like to in the loop of the mono. I like to go through the loop of the mono. Okay. And through the eyes. Usually I do that two or three times. And that connects the bait to the mono leader. Yeah, and what we're doing here is trying to prevent the blue marlin when he grabs it of getting it. He might tear it up, but we don't want him to take it. He's not going to rip it off the yep. leader. Exactly. So Pulling everything tight there. And then we're going to do the same thing again on the top of the mackerel. Okay. And again, it's just to keep the stitching and the whole mackerel together. Together, yep. Go right. Through the eyes. This one is not so many, as many stitches. I, I kind of spaced these ones out a little bit more. Again, um, it's just one continuous flow of wax thread. Yep. So if he grabs it and pulls on it, uh, it's still holding the whole bait together. And he doesn't have a meal in his mouth and swim away. Yep. Where he gets to all the way to the boat. You tease, tease him, him all the way to the boat. And then you can pitch them your pitch bait. With a which, hook. With a hook, which <laughs> we're gonna talk about here in a second. And again, go back through the eyes. And on this one, we're gonna go through the top of the mono. All right. Back through the eyes, just usually just twice. Tightening everything up. I like to do the knot, take the one piece of floss, go through the mono. Take this one, go through opposite. Making a knot right there on the top of the head. Right on the mono. Right on the mono. There you go. And now, 
what that's doing too is making it so you're pulling, it's pulling from the mono. Like, you know, everything is coming tight. On the mono. Here, on the mono. So it's not pulling on. And then if you look really close, one of the pluses about coming in and out of the same holes, after you're pulling these mackerels for an hour, two hours, that's where it starts washing out. Yep. So the less, the, the least number of holes in the mackerel helps make the bait last yes. longer. Yep. And then on this mackerel, you can slide, uh, um, slide your express on and then, or your, whatever you want to put on and then put it behind your squid chain. All right, sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is a teaser mackerel that we can put behind our squid chains. And the marlin, sailfish, it all works on it. So guys, thank you very much and thanks for joining us here in the fly zone.